keeping yourself? Someone's been doing it for me. Meanwhile, blind windows are stuck on the shelf. You said we'd work together. Like New Year's crisis? What can I say? Always making excuses. I promise I'll call you later today. You said that last time. I uh, won't let you down, Betty. I guess I'll just have to trust you. For Miss Desmond's German Shepherd, I'm the one who's been calling. The name's Sheldrake. And a couple of weeks ago, I was looking out of my office window, and I see you driving on the lot. And I said, that's exactly the car I've been looking for. It's a great for my Crosby picture. So, I made a few inquiries, and I've been calling for two weeks. Doesn't she ever pick up the phone? <laughs> it's so perfect. You can't find that kind of quality outside of a museum. I'm willing to it's outrageous. You insult her. How can you be so cruel? I forbid you to approach her. You're insane. Go away! Go away! Did you see how they all came crowding around? They still love me and soon will be breaking a new ground. Just like before, we had such fun. He gave the world new ways to dream. We also found new ways to dream. Let's have a good long talk one day. The old team will be back in business soon. Sorry, my next shot's ready. Mr. Gillis, what is it, Max? I just found out the reason for all those phone calls from Paramount. It's not Madame they want. It's her car. my decision, Norma. New York must be consulted. That's fine. You ask any exhibitor in the country. I'm not forgotten. Of course you aren't. Goodbye, young fellow. We'll see what we can do. I'm not worried. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be back. Was that really Norma Desmond? It was. She must be a million years old. I hate to think where that puts me. I could be a father. I'm sorry, Mr. DeMille. If you could have seen her at 17, when all of her dreams were new, beautiful and strong before it all went wrong, she's never known works the night shift, and she takes classes all day. Here's the thing, they both share the same room, sleep in the same bed, it works all cheaper that way. I have a feeling you're just kidding, but to me it sounds believable, makes a better opening than that car chase scene. Girl finds boy, borrowing her toothbrush, oh. or oversleeping. Or at her sewing machine. <laughs> That's not bad. There's some real possibilities. Who's Norma? Who's who? I'm sorry, I don't usually read private cigarette cases. Uh, Norma's a friend of mine. Middle-aged lady. Very foolish. Very generous. I'll say this is solid gold. Mad about the boy. 
Sorry. Stuck in Tennessee. It rains all the time. They're weeks behind. No one knows when they'll get back. Good. What's good about it? I'm missing him something fierce. No, no, I mean this idea of ours is really pretty good. Back to work. What if he's a teacher? Where does that get us? I don't see what good it would do. No, it's great if they do the same job. So much in common, they fall in love with you. Yes, but if he's just a teacher, then we lose those scenes in the factory. Now that he is a champion for the working man. Girl likes boy. She respects his talent. Working with someone can turn you into a man. This is fun. Riding with a partner. Yes, and it could be a hell of a movie. Can we really do this? I know. A little understanding. Mm -hmm. 
nor mine. There's nothing to worry about. I haven't done anything. Of course you haven't. Good night, darling. I should have stayed there, poor Norma, so desperate to be ready for what would never happen. But Betty would be waiting. We had a script to finish, one unexpected love scene. Two people both risking a kind of happy ending. T H E E N D. I can't believe it! I finished my first script! Oh, stop it. You're making me feel old. <laughs> it's exciting, though, isn't it? Uh, how old are you, anyway? Twenty-two. Smart girl. Shouldn't we open some champagne? Well, my friend, the best I can offer is a stroll to the water cooler at the end of the lot. Sounds good to me. Right. I love the back lot here. All cardboard, all hollow, all phony, all done with mirrors. I think I love it better than any street in the world. I spent my childhood here. Oh, were you a child actress? No, but my family always expected me to become a great star. Uh, uh. I had ten years of dramatic lessons, diction, dancing, everything you can think of. Then the studio made a test. That is the saddest story I've ever heard. <laughs> Not at all. Come along. I was born two blocks from here. My father was the head electrician at the studio until he died. And mother still works in wardrobe. Uh, second generation, huh? Third. Grandma did stunt work for Colonel White. Uh, you know, I guess it is kind of exciting at that. Finishing a script. Betty. What? Are you all right? Sure. <coughs> Something's the matter, isn't it? I had a telegram from Artie. Is something wrong? He wants me to come out to Tennessee. He says it will only cost two dollars to get married and clipped. Well, what's stopping you? Now that we've finished the script. Hey, why are you crying? You're getting married. Isn't that what you wanted? Not anymore. Don't you love Artie? Of course I do. I'm just not in love with him anymore, that's all. Why not? What happened? You did. 